Hi students, I want to show you how to get started using Microsoft Teams. So the first thing you should do in order to get to Microsoft Teams is you're going to go to office.com. And when you can log in with your school's email account at office.com to access your Microsoft Office 365 account. Inside of that account, you should have different apps that you have access to. One of them is Microsoft Teams. Now this is a way for you to access Microsoft Teams from a web browser, such as Google Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, or any other uh, web browser, Safari on a Mac. And you can access this anywhere you have internet. There is also an app that you can install on Windows and Mac computers. So you may want to use that. It's a little more stable and it has a couple extra features. So if you are on a Windows or a Mac computer, use this. If you're using a Chromebook, you're going to want to use the web app, which you can access at office.com or at teams.microsoft.com. I'm going to show the web app for the remainder of this video, and all the features are accessible on each of the apps. There's also an app you can install on your phone or tablet, Android or iOS. So if you have an Android phone or tablet, or if you have an iPad or an iPhone, you can install the Teams app, and that keeps you connected. So once you log into your team, uh, you'll see your classes. Before we actually look at what it looks like in your class and what your teacher may do, um, I want to show you that you can click on your name up here, or your initials should show up, and you have some settings available to you. One of them is um, the theme that you want to look at teams with. Possibly you're like me and you like a dark theme in most of your apps, so you can do that. You can also change it to high contrast mode if you need that. And you can also um, identify the way you'd like to look at your different teams, either in a grid view, which you see here, or in a list view, which shows them all in a list, and you can access the team over here. I'm going to leave it in the default grid view for now. You can also go over to your notification preferences to identify the types of things you want to receive notifications for. If notifications start to become annoying for you as you go through your school year and using Teams, you may want to revisit this section to set them up in the way that you want them to be. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is access your class. Once you go into your class, you're going to see a channel called General. The General channel is where most of your class's resources are going to be. The first section you'll always see is the post section. Any new assignments, announcements that your teacher is going to make are going to show up in this post section. It's kind of like a news feed. So if you think about social media, Instagram, Twitter, um, any of those, Facebook, um, they have a news feed and this is going to populate with a feed throughout history of different posts. Notifications will also show up in the bottom right hand corner. You can turn that on so you can receive them on your computer. All right. You also have a file section in which you can have access to different files your teacher may upload. Your teacher may set up a class notebook for you to have access to. And then all your assignments will also be posted in this assignment section. As your teacher grades your assignments, you can see them in your completed work section, and you can also see them when you click on grades. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to post an assignment to our class. After your teacher posts an assignment, you'll receive a notification on your computer. Or if you install the Teams app on your phone, you may receive it on there so you know that your teacher has posted an assignment. New assignment was created. You saw the little notification come up. The activity section, this little bell icon, is also where your notifications are housed. And you'll notice that it says that I have a new notification. Remember, as I said, the post section is a live feed of everything that happens. So notice the assignment shows up here. Again, it shows up in the assignments area as well. And this is where we can access any assignment from any time. Let's open up the assignment. 
you'll notice a couple things. It gives you your assignment's title. It gives you the due date and when it closes, if your teacher assigns a closing date. This is important for you as a student to know when this assignment is due. And when it closes, because you will no, not be able to submit the assignment past this closing date and time. Your teacher may provide some instructions. You can see how many points this assignment is worth. And you can also preview the rubric your teacher is going to use for the assignment if they've attached a rubric. For instance, if I click on this, you can see how this rubric is and how you can achieve the maximum amount of points for this assignment. Your teacher may not assign a rubric for every assignment, so just note that it might be here if they do. Your teacher may provide reference material for your assignment. So if you click on this, you can see any of the reference material they provided. For instance, it's a PowerPoint. It happens to be blank, but your teacher may upload a PowerPoint for you to actually work on. The My Work section, your teacher may attach um, documents that you need to work on, or you may need to upload work from your computer to attach this assignment, or your teacher may give you instructions to create a new file, like a Word document, a PowerPoint presentation, or an Excel spreadsheet. When you create a new file, you can give it a name, click Attach, and it's going to attach that assignment. Now, for you to work on it, all you need to do is click on this. Even if your teacher attached it for you, you can just click on this to edit the assignment. And as you continue to work on it, it will automatically save. I'm just going to smash on my keyboard for a minute. And up top, you'll notice it will say saved for it, you know, as an indicator that it has saved. When you're done working on the assignment, or if you need to take a break, you can just click close. That work will have saved, and it will still be here for you to go back to. So I can click on this again. It's going to open up my assignment for me that I was just working on. And notice all that work saved, so you can always go back and access your work. When you're completely done with the assignment and you want your teacher to grade it, you're going to go up to the Turn In button in the top right-hand corner here. Once you click turn in, your teacher will be notified that you have submitted the assignment and it's ready for grading. When you click turn in, you'll get a cool little animation and your work is turned in. If you realize you forgot something, you can always click undo turn in to edit your assignment again and then return it in. After your teacher grades your work and returns it to you, you'll receive a notification that your work has been returned to you. And when you click on that notification, you can see what you got. So you got 100 out of 100 points. You can also go to your grade section to see all the due dates for all the assignments you have, its name, your status, if you need to still do it, or if it's been returned, um, if you've completed it, or if it's been returned, and your score for it. So the grade section is a great way for you to view all this. If you go to the Assignments tab, you'll notice that if you've completed all your work, it will say nothing left to turn in, hashtag winning. But if you need to access any of your turned in and completed work, you can always click this completed bu um, button to see all the assignments you have completed and turned in. So if you need to get access to them to look up something, you can do that. The other thing I'm going to point out is you can click on this Assignments tab to see all your classes and be able to quickly access your assignments there and not go through the team itself. The last thing I want to show you is the chat section. Your school may not have this enabled, but if they do, go over to the chat section. And this is a great spot for you to be able to communicate with your teacher and ask them for extra help or, diff or questions. You can also collaborate with your classmates on assignments through this section. To create a new chat, just click on this button here and type in your teacher's name. Select your teacher, and you can create group chats also with this feature. So if you want to communicate with multiple people, just type in an additional name. 
Once you've done that, you can click down below and you can type whatever you'd like to send to your teacher. If you'd like to video call them, I suggest chatting with your teacher first and asking them if you can video call them. But if you can do a one-on-one -on -one video call with this button up top here. You can also collaborate on files with your teacher if you need them to review something and work with them while you're on a video call. You can upload it to the file section of this chat with your teacher. I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions on how to use Microsoft Teams, just leave me a comment in the section below and I can help you out. If you want to learn more about Teams and help your teacher out, hit subscribe so you can see more videos from my channel.